Hello again everyone, how are you all and hope you're all well. Today we're going to be taking a look at this Argos catalogue that is as old as I am. This Argos catalogue here is from autumn 1983 which makes it 40 years old and that also makes me 40 years old. Yeah, enough said about that the better. Anyway, let's take a look and see what toys, games and other random things were out in 1983. Right, so before we get to the computer section, I am going to just pause it here and have a look at these TVs. I mean, I've skipped through all this. Um, you don't need to see all that. If you do, let me know in the comments down below whether you'd like to see whatever else is in this book from 1983. But I'm more interested, like we all were back as kids, to go straight to the back, to the toys, to the computer games, and just see what, what's what. But I pause at this uh, particular pace because I've got one of these. I've got one of them in my games room. It's called the Philips TV Cube. And I tell you what, style-wise, I absolutely love it. You can tell that we're going slightly more futuristic style than these ones down here. Um, mine's in white, but it's a really cool TV. It's got a cassette player on the side, a radio on the top. Um, you've got your timer and alarm and everything on the front. And obviously your, is it nine inch, like colored, uh, color, black and white display. Um, and yeah, I really like it. I really do. And these ones here, I really like. Uh, the sort of like radio boombox star ones. Um, if I can remember, I will link because I've got a quite a big boombox TV. Um, I'll link it down in the description below because I did manage to get that hooked up to the internet. Um, watching Netflix and stuff like that on it. So if I remember, did you have any of these TVs? Let me know. Uh, price wise, what we got? Like number three down here. That is a 14 inch color screen. That's £185. I do like this one here, though, the Amstrad. Did anyone have this Amstrad TV? I bet they were cheaper. God, I'm going off topic already, yeah. £175 for a 10-inch colour TV. That actually wasn't bad back in the day. And um, video players. Uh, trust me, we will get to the computer games. We will. Um, but I still, to this day, need to get one of these. My granddad always had one. I know a lot of people had a TV like this in their house. Even with a trolley with the wheels on it, they could move it around. Um, and what these are 22 inch color TVs and we are 315 pound for that but video players remember when remotes were actually hardwired in and your cassettes came out the top it's sort of you press the button and it went here yeah, have it. it threw it back at you uh, yeah we always had the top loading ones uh, that's an Amstrad and uh, what number three 429 pound for that Amstrad video player and if we go down here, we've got a Sharp, and that one is number seven, and that is £549. Yeah, how far has technology come now that literally, well, not these ones, I think if you saw any of these in a charity shop, you would pick them up, but just become very obsolete very fast, didn't it? Right, anyway, let's get on to, are we on the computer section? We are. Um, there's gonna be no Sega, there's going to be no Nintendo, it's a weird thing is, I don't even think there was any um, Sinclair products in here in 83. It's, it's a bit weird, because it should be. But we've got some oddities that we've got in here, and we're going to have a look at them now. We have the Mattel Aquarius. Argos catalogue, 1983. Mattel Aquarius. This thing was not on sale for very long. Not a lot of people had one, or even knew about it, to be honest. It was discounted so quickly. Um, where are we? Number 18. And for the Mattel Aquarius, which would have come with that, it doesn't come with the joysticks, that's separate. I always remember that was separate, and the tape that's separate. Um, he's £79, so it's not bad. Not the greatest computer in the world, but I know a lot of people really love the Aquarius because it was discounted, because uh, it was you couldn't afford a, a higher end computer, that's all you had. And if this is all you had and what you grew up with, and there's still people coding for this today, which I absolutely love. Um, it needs to get more love, the Aquarius does. It really does. It's, uh, <laughs> it was a flop. I'm not going to deny it. It wasn't amazing, but it definitely deserves uh, highlighting every now and again. Do you remember these though, when you had your videotapes made to look like books? Weird. Uh, and here, here's a, another relic I had noticed, but you've got the tapes down here. But this one here, number 13, is the Philips Video 2000 cassettes. 
Now the Video 2000 was a failed format that failed even before Betamax. And if you've never seen one before, they're video tapes that you used to take out, turn around and push back in to record on the other side, like cassette tapes. Uh, VHS just dominated the market. It's, it is what it is. Um, I still say Betamax is a far superior format. Uh, now I'm sounding very old. Uh, well, I am 40. Anyway, next page we have the Vic 20 and uh, I'll get to this side in a minute, Tetley. Give it a minute. Um, we have the, the VIC-20 and that's number one and you look price point now and this came out before the Aquarius and it's still £139. VIC-20, I say it now, is my preferred Commodore computer. I know people really love the Commodore 64 but I had a VIC-20 before I had a Commodore 64 and I'm talking since collecting again. I never had a, any Commodore computer back in the day and I've just got a real fondness for it. I love that the cassettes are like so hard to stick in the back. Uh, I love the keyboard, I love the white color of it. Um, and the games, so many homebrew games, I'm gonna say this a lot, so many homebrew games are being made for the VIC-20. Um, I think Chronosoft even announced that another physical game just came out on tape, like yesterday or the day before. So um, yeah, apparently these joysticks those were terrible, if you can see it down there. That's really not the best joysticks to get. And some great games, Gorf. Uh, just great game, and oh, but this down here, I have to zoom this in. This is a Pac-Man clone it's called Jelly Monsters. But just look at that picture. That is absolutely atrocious. Uh, give you nightmares, that will. Um, and yeah, on the next page, we have the TI-99. Now, as I said, ZX Tech, we will get to it because um, great channel, go and check him out. He is the only person I know that had one of these back in the day. And he said, he was it for Christmas or birthday or something like that he got it for? And we are number number eight. Where are we? TI-99. Um, where's the price? Number eight, down here. £149. Um, the voice synthesizer. How much was that separately? £49.95 for voice uh, modulator. That's, that's an expensive little add-on, that is. That really is. Um, don't know anyone who loads games for the TI-99 from tape. I've only ever known people use cartridges. Uh, some great games, though. I mean, um, oh wait, number 14 down here. What's that one? Uh, TI uh, Munchman. Yeah, great game. Really, really good game, that one. Uh, highly recommend it. And um, this comes in two different models, this one. This is sort of the early one with the brushed metal effect on it. Kind of like a DeLorean. So uh, what is not to like about the TI-99? Next page, getting into one of my favourites over here. Uh, again, another one that doesn't get a lot of love, but um, actually both of them on this page. Always gets overshadowed, this one, the Intellivision. Uh, and I must admit, even in my own collection, I have one. Um, but yeah, I don't hook it up very often. And I think the downfall of the uh, Intellivision is these controllers. Uh, but you can see Mattel Intellivision and Aquarius have the same style of joysticks uh, with the little disc thing that you spin on it. And uh, yeah, it's got some good games. I would still say doesn't quite get as good as the Atari, but the Atari market got really flooded and I'm just waffling here. Great console, definitely gets overlooked, but one that just, just gets forgotten about. And I love the Philips video pack. But mate John and me, still to this day, hook up a video pack at his house and there's a couple of games that we always play like um the table football killer bees um oh was it russian attack no oh. john let me know in comments what was the game that we unwrapped the other day uh we had a sealed game and it's actually quite a rare one and we unsealed it and for the first time we played it and there's also another game as well, which we found the other day, which is one that he had as a kid. And uh, we played that to death as well. Don't think it's actually on here. You know me and my memory, John. Let me know in the comments below. What are those two games? Um, Air Sea Battle. No, it definitely wasn't Air Sea Battle. It's one that came with a big board game. A lot of these came with big, big board games. And uh, look out at the channel in the future because um, there's going to be something very special for the affiliates video pack coming to uh, this channel. And look at that, you know how popular it is when it ends up with a two-page spread and we've got the Atari. 
the amount of games for the Atari. And you've got to think, 83. This had been going from 77. And it's still in the catalogues. Uh, still getting, like, what, number four? Um, 69.99. You know, but it's still going strong. People were still buying these games. Again, the um, cases here, they make them look like little books. Um, again, so just the library of games. But became its downfall, didn't it? Too many games. Saturated the market. Um, yeah, such a shame. Oh, hang on. Is that it? Sorry, I know it was also... Because it was this this logo here. I know that's one that is in television. Oh, John will let me know in the comments. Anyway, um, moving on. We also have the ColecoVision. What a console. People always think this is a second gen, but it's not. It's a third gen. Uh, it came out sort of like round about the... Or just after, or just before... The video game crashed, so it never really got the traction it deserved. But the games on this, um, they are really up another level. Um, the steering wheel add-ons, you can also plug in on the front and you can play Atari cartridges on your ColecoVision. Can you imagine today, like Xbox selling an attachment to let you play PlayStation games on your Xbox? Wouldn't happen. Um, there's also um, the Coleco Gemini. Again, I do own one of those. Um, we'll have to show that off another day. Um, it's just a standalone Coleco Atari. It's like they made the add-on, but standalone. Uh, yeah, great games for that. If you can get one, highly recommend you getting one of these. And we have the Vectrex. Now, this has got a proper cult following now, hasn't it? The, the homebrew scene on the Vectrex is the biggest out of any retro console i've seen and it's not just the games not just the overlays it's the mods for the actual screen uh the 3d mods people are liking making games so you have to lie them on the side and new controllers everything from software to hardware the, the 3d glasses for it people have remade the 3d glasses there are 3d games for the vectrex stunning stunning console um and if you can, again, with the ColecoVision, get one if you can. Or if you can't buy one, go and play one if you see one at a, uh, a retro event. Uh, you will not be disappointed. Love the Coleco, uh, the Vectrex. And, oh, handhelds. Sorry. Do you know what? This video is probably going to go on for a little while. So feel free to spin on to whatever bit you want to look at. Um, but I'm just going down a bit of memory lane here. So why not just carry on? Um, what... Okay, which ones did you have here? <laughs> let, let me know in the comments below. Uh, I have had Astro Wars. I don't have it anymore. I've had Scramble. I do have this Munchman. A <laughs> funny story with this is when I actually first started collecting again, I saw one of these in a shop. And it was just like in a big box full of stuff. And they asked him, like, well, how much was this? And he went, oh, um, you know, give me two quid for it. It's just a calculator. <laughs> so I bought Munchman as being sold as a calculator. And I'll tell you what. It's a lot more fun than the calculator. That is a good Pac-Man. Again, Tech League, I know you like your Pac-Man games. Get yourself a Munchman. Absolutely stunning Pac-Man game. Uh, and there's also Pac-Man 2 as well, which is a great two-player one because one person plays as the ghost, one person plays as Pac-Man. You know what I mean? And what can go wrong with both of you holding the same console? <laughs> no argument's going to happen there, are they? I love these ones. Uh, this Super Cobra one. I would love to get one of them. I have had these in the past, and I do like the Game of Watches. <laughs> no more say. I do like the Game of Watches. Why, why I sold them, I don't know. But I did, and unfortunately then they're too expensive to buy back. Uh, yeah, it's the Donkey Kong one, uh, the one that opens up sideways, is the one that my cousin used to have, not the one that opens top to bottom. Uh, this one's quite fun as well. But I've got a story with this one here. Uh, this uh, Crazy Monsters, because I have one of these in my collection, and I will never sell it because I saved it from a skip. Uh, it's missing the joystick, uh, it's missing the battery compartment, but it's still got all the artwork around the sides, and it works. And you know what? It's such a fun game. Future video to come, I think, because for one of these little standalone sort of like mini arcades, that, it's complex. It's got multiple levels that you've got to do all on the same screen and uh yeah that's this is childhood memories isn't it right here i talk about childhood memories tomitronic the 3d tomitronics 
we'll probably uh, skip through a bit here. Um, just point out little things that I find nostalgic because this video is going to get way too long if I don't. Uh, Speak and Spell. Uh, classic. Big track. Remember having a big track. Uh, and my dad, I think he also bought the trailer for it as well. Oh, God, I'm this... Oh, there's nostalgia overload here. We're getting nostalgia. I, I literally can go... I had that. I had that. I think I still have a Speak and Spell. Um, definitely had one of these from a charity shop. It's odd because you used to change the questions by putting on um, another book, which sort of like stuck on the side here. Then it just changed the uh, the questions. And this here, the King uh, King Man, definitely not King Kong ripoff. Um, and I've remade that as like Sonic as well and everything else. Did you have any of these? Again, let me know in the comments. Um, we get into the board game section now. Absolute classic and never changes. You could pick up the catalogue now and you'll see Game <laughs> game of Life, Downfall. You probably wouldn't see Smurfs. Um, what else we have? Guess Who? You know what I mean? All these classics. Connect Four. The package is slightly... Oh, now, this one's a little bit more interesting. God, who remembers Space Attack? The, the sound of that um, spinning top whirling up. As it gets faster and faster and faster and faster, and you drop it, and then it turns into a really hectic game of um, pinball, all for like ten seconds. <laughs> yeah, you know, great, great, love that. Um, yeah, look like I could. Most of these are action ones on here. Mouse trap. How many people set up mouse trap and just did the mechanism, but never actually played the game? I think I was one of those. Oh wow! Crossfire. Love Crossfire. I never seen a tank command, but that looks like one I've absolutely loved. Um, but yeah, let, let's keep going. I, I wasn't really going to go into the toys and stuff. Um, yeah, we can skip that one because that's look at the, <laughs> the Spider Man action set. Okay, okay. Uh, now I do have to zoom on on this. The Spider Man uh, sort of compass. <laughs> you. you, you <laughs> You stick the pencil in there and the spikes out of his foot look. That's pretty cool. Um, music section, Spirograph. Everyone loves Spirograph. These were everywhere, weren't they? These sort of like uh, little moulds. Lego, classic. Star Wars. Shall we have a look at the price? In 1983, it was for, let's say, the Millennium Falcon. Number nine. Millennium Falcon. Back in 1983, would have set you back 22.95. Wow. Uh, the X-wing, eight pound forty-five. Uh, Snow speeder, twelve pound ninety-five. The attack walker, well, that's actually quite expensive. Uh, at a whole thirty-nine ninety-five. <laughs> but look at this, this set of four figures. Which includes Boba Fett and uh, R two D two. That's number fourteen. Four pound ninety five for the for the set. And this one down here's got Darth Vader in it. Um, what's that one? Sixteen. Four ninety five. Did I say fourteen? If I said fourteen, I meant four ninety five. You can see on there. Look. You know me and my brain. I had one of these from a charity shop. And I could not figure out which direction it was supposed to go as a kid. <laughs> Weird the things you remember in it. Action Force. We've got He-Man as well. It's just, it's just childhood memories coming back. This is I never had any He-Man stuff. Uh, what my friend did have, and I remember his birthday very, uh, very vividly, is he had Mask. He had the, uh, is it the Boulder Mountain? I remember him getting that for his birthday and everyone who was at his party being jealous. And, uh, yeah, oh, look at that. He-Man dress-up kit. Right next to Chips dress-up kit. Evil can evil. What's this, number nine? Uh, Playmat. Star Wars Playmat. And that comes in at £6.95. Yeah. I'm sure I've had that Spider-Man stuff. Yeah. Wow. Talk about a uh, a memory being unlocked here. Do you remember when shining a picture of just some slides on a wall and reading along to a book was um, was entertaining? <laughs> no, oh god, I'm going to sound old now. 
No Netflix for us. <laughs> and yeah, why why Christmas tree in the kids section? But, uh, yeah, look at that tent. Okay, I'm saying now, Mr. Frosty. Who had one? Who had a Mr. Frosty? Because I always remember everyone wanting one, nobody ever got one, and then years later, everyone bought one because it's nostalgic, I'm gonna get a Mr. Frosty, and it's rubbish. <laughs> it really is absolutely rubbish. And, uh, oh, that, that's very, very similar to the Ghostbusters one that I got. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, we're kinda getting to the... We had that turtle. Every time you put him in the water, his head bobbed down. And, uh, of course, we've got to have E.T. next to Orville the Duck. And the, uh... Everyone, everyone I know had one of these. But it really is an ugly-looking thing, isn't it? I'm surprised it didn't scare anyone. That scared people. We had one of them. The noise this thing made... I think our one may have been broken, but every time you pushed it back down, he screamed as you pushed him back in. And, um, yeah, ours must have been broken. It's really interesting there. See, the weird thing is, it's like I keep thinking I'm getting to like the um, the kiddie section, um, but we're, we're not. Oh, the red teapot. Red. It's yellow. <laughs> the yellow teapot. I'm not going to cut that out. You know I'm not. And uh, when I went through this, my wife said, oh, there better be a fashion wheel on there. And the weird thing is, I actually remember my cousin having this fashion wheel and me still thinking back then, what's the point? <laughs> but my wife saw this fashion wheel and went, oh, can I get one? Just definitely uh, didn't translate well that. So yeah, that, that's it. We've uh, pretty much gone through all of this now. But there is, as I said, let, let's just pick some random pictures from here. What have we got? Old Spice in the cupboard. Yeah, just a bit, a bit of randomness. It's a nice trip down memory lane. Uh, all the watches. Right, I'm going to stop now. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep flicking through this. It's been fun going through these. And Vectrex, it's been amazing going through the computers. As I said, no Sega, no Nintendo. There wasn't even any Spectrum stuff in there. Which I found odd. That, that's what confused me, to be honest. When I saw TI-99 and Aquarius. Um, yeah, just a bit of an odd mix. So I thought I'd share it with you. Hope this video hasn't gone on too long. And if it has, I apologise. Once I get started talking, sometimes I just can't stop. So more videos to come. Lots of more restoration videos. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for your support. And I will see you all again next time. Bye.